Okay, class. So now let's have another topic, which is the building uh, building conveying system. So this involves the elevators, escalators, lift. You have chutes, and then maybe the dump waiters. Okay, so that includes the conveying system. Also in construction, we have the conveyor belts. And then we have the gondola for the building construction. Okay, so for the building uh, building conveying system, so we first have the elevator and the dumb waiters. So for the definition of elevator that is generally used in buildings where several peak periods of travel occurs each day. Example, in office buildings, hospital, apartment, eh, apartment buildings. So normally, based on the National Building Code, so four-story and above levels of building should have at least uh, one elevator. So four-story and above. Okay, so there are two types of, uh, uh, types of elevators, which is the electric elevator and the hydraulic elevator or oil hydraulic elevator. So for electric uh, elevator, so this is the diagram. So we have the control equipment mostly at the top and then the elevator machine. So the, this is the penthouse floor. So mostly this is for the uh, control room of the, or the machine room of the elevator. So in the elevator car, so this is the elevator car, you have also a counterweights, the CW rails, and also we have the rail or the roller guide or shoe. Okay, so this is the floor levels and then the basement. So at the bottom, you have the oil buffers. So as you have seen in uh, SM Seaside, at the bottom, you have buffers okay so if ever the elevator cars reaches the bottom so it uh, supports the elevator cars okay then you have the penthouse level you have the machine room so you have the control panels also so this is the diagram of the elevators And the next uh, type is the oil hydraulic elevators. So you have here the machine room is maybe at the bottom or at the first level of the building. So a machine room is a room housing the hoisting machinery, control equipment and sheaves for raising and lowering the elevator car. Then you have the car frame. So this is the structural steel frame of an elevator car to which are attached the platform, guide shoes, elevator car safety, hoisting cable, and the control equipment. And then you have also the lantern. So the uh, this is a light usually over the entrance to an elevator on each floor of the multi-story building that signals the approach of the elevator. So you can have going up or going down, or you can have the numbering of the levels. Another is the annunciator. So it is a signaling apparatus in an elevator car or at a landing that displays a visual indication of floor landing. So it depends. You can have a lantern and annunciator or combined lantern and annunciator. So for the lantern, you have going up and going down patterns. And then for annunciator, that is the level of floor, the elevator is uh, for the elevator stop, okay? Next, we have the call button. So a push button. So this is a typo, typo error. This is a push button for uh, requesting an elevator. So you can have going up or going down button. 
And then you have the door interlock. So a safety device for preventing the operation of an elevator car unless the host hoistway door is locked in the clo in a closed position. And also you have the door contact, a safety, a safety device for preventing the operation of an elevator car unless its door or gate is fully closed. So the elevator car will not move up and down if the door is open. The door interlock is open. So it should be closed so that the elevator car will move up and down. Okay. So these are the parts of an electric elevator. So you have first the shaft. So this is the vertical passageway for car and counterweights. So shaft. You have the uh, passageway of the elevator car. Okay. Next, we have the car or the elevator car. It is a cage of light metal supported on a structural, structural frame, the top member of which the cable, the top member of which the cable that the that the that carry the cars are fastened. So this is the cable car. So where the passengers of the elevator uh, move. Okay. So this is the elevator car. Next, we have the cables. So are the means for lifting or lowering the car. Usually three to eight cables placed in parallel fastened to the top of the car by cable socket passing over a motor driven cylindrical shift to the counterweight. So I think we all see what uh, an elevator is. No? Next, we have the counterweights. So these are rectangular, blo rectangular blocks of cast iron stock in one frame, which is fastened to the opposite ends of the cable to which the car is fastened. Okay. Next, we have also a guardrail. So a vertical track that guide the cars and the counterweights. So normally, you see this in uh, elevators in Ayala Mall, no? especially in the Ayala in uh, business park. No? So you can see the counterweights and the guardrail of their elevator. Next, we have the machine room. A room usually placed directly above the shaft of which the elevator machine is housed. So it contains the motor generator, so MJ set, which supplies uh, energy to the elevator machine and control boards and the control equipment. Next, we have the elevator machine. So turns the shift that lift and lowers the elevator car. And then we have also have uh, controls. It is a combination of push buttons, contacts, relays, and devices operated manually or automatically to initiate door openings, starting acceleration, retardation, retardation, leveling, and stopping of the elevator car. So we have also uh, safety devices. So in uh, elevators, there should be a main brake and a safety brakes, okay? So for the main brake, mounted directly on the shaft of the elevator machine. You have this. I think this is the elevator brake. Brake, no? And then also we have a safety switch. So it is designed to stop an elevator car automatically before cars, car speed becomes excessive. On overspeed, the speed gover governor will cut off power to the motor and set the brake. So this usually this usually stops the car but should stop but should speed still increase the governor will actuate rail clamps mounted at, <clears throat> mounted at the bottom of the car on each side so this will clamp the guide rails bringing the car to a switch stop and then also we have uh, another safety devices in elevator so that is the electric final limit switches. So are located a few feet below and above the safe travel limits of 
elevator car. So if car over, over travels either down or up, this switches the energize the motors and sets the main brake. And then last we have the oil or spring buffer. So I think you've seen this in uh, the bottom of each elevator. Maybe you have seen this in uh, C side, SMC side. They have the spring buffer. So it is placed at the bottom of the elevator pit. So not to stop a falling car, but to bring it to a partially cushioned stop if the car should overshoot the lower terminal. Okay, so this is the spring buffer. So next we have the methods of arranging elevator machine sheaves and roofs. So single wrap traction machine, so supporting cables pass over the sheave in grooves and connects to the counterweights. The lifting power is exerted by the sheave through the tra traction of the cables in the groove. So you have the traction machine, the sheave, and the counterweight. Another is one-to-one -one double wrap tra traction machine. So the cables first wrap over the traction sheave, the T, this one, then, then around the secondary or idler sheave S, this one, and once more going uh, going around T and S to and S to the counterweights. So this provides greater traction and is used in many automatic high speed installation. So you have this. So this is the elevator car, then attached to the cable, going to the traction machine, and then going to shift, and then go back to traction machine, and then the and then goes to shift and to the counterweights. Okay, so that's one to one double wrap traction machine. Another is a two to one double wrap traction machine for this is for freight elevators. So this two is to one uh, ratio roofing has a mechanical advantage of two, so which result in a high speed, low power, and therefore low cost traction machine. So this is the illustration. So this is a freight car or elevator. So goes to goes to the traction machine and then goes to the secondary level to the ship and then goes back to the traction machine and then goes down to the secondary level ship and connecting your counterweights. Okay. So that's the two two to one double wrap traction machine. Next, we have the underslung system. So this is used where the elevator machine is located at the basement. So this is the elevator car. And then the, tra uh, the traction machine, this is the shiv I. And then you have the counterweight. Next, we have the types of elevator machines. So I think there are only two types of elevator machines. Okay, so the two types is girlish traction machine and the GERD traction machine. So first we have the gearless traction machine. It consists of the direct current motors, the shaft of which is directly connected to the brake wheel and uh, to the driving sheave. The elevator cable are placed around this sheave. This type of machine is used for medium and high speed elevator for office and residential condominiums of 10 stories or more, where high speeds and smooth quality operation are desired. Another, we have the geared traction machine. So this type of machine employs a worm and gear uh, between the driving motor and the ship. It is considered to be less super superior to the gearless traction machine since it has more moving parts and requires more maintenance used for low and medium speed passengers and freight elevators. And then we have the systems of elevator controls. So single, single automatic push button control. So this is the simplest of passenger operated automatic control system. It handles only one call at a time, providing an, interrupt, an, an, an interrupted trip for each call. 
And then also we have the collective control. Control is arranged to collect all waiting up calls on the trip up and all waiting down calls on the trip down. The control system stalls all calls until they are answered and automatically reverses the direction of travel at the highest and the lowest calls. When all calls have been cleared, the car will remain at the floor of, it, of its last stop awaiting the next call. So maybe uh, this is a mostly common use control for system elevator, the collective control. Next, we have the electronic group supervisory dispatching and control. So this system is used to control not only single elevators, but an entire group or bank of cars. During peak periods, all cars are in position. Automatically, the system shuts down successively. Cars as the number of passengers reduces and return them to service as the number of passengers again increases in a high peak. So the system of Otis Elevator Company is called the Autotronic Elevatoring. The system of West Westinghouse Electric Corporation is called the Selectomatic uh, elevator system. So normally we will use the collective as we do in our uh, elevator installation. No? Maybe you can have your elevator for residential or commercial. You can use at least a single automatic push button control or a collective control since we don't have uh, many elevators no? as to the buildings high-rise buildings, okay. So next we have the OL hydraulic elevators, also called a plunger elevator. So it is raised by means of movable rod nor plungers rigidly fixed to the bottom of the car. So the system is hydraulic and operates the same way as a hydraulic automobile jack. So OL from the reservoir is pumped under the plunger, uh, thereby raising it and the car. The pump is stopped during downward motion, the car being lowered by gravity and controlled by action of bypass, bypass valve, which also controls the position of the car during the upward motion. Okay, so the absence of cable drums, uh, MG set, and the penthouse equipment makes this system inexpensive and often the choice for low speed. Low rise application where construction of the plunger pit uh, does not present difficulties and where absence of penthouse is desirable. So for oil hydraulic elevator, this is inexpensive compared to electric elevators. Okay. Next we have the dump waiters. So this is the illustration of dump waiters. So mostly they are used uh, to transport uh, food from one level to another. So that's the dumb waitress or waiters. So this is the illustration of the dumb waiters. Okay. So this is used mainly for uh, food transport or you can have a freight transport. So next we have escalators and conveyors. So for the definition, it is used where large number of people are scattered throughout a given area and on a large number of floors. So these people being in, in being interested is moving about almost constantly to various locations for short period of time. So thus traffic is constantly on the move, both up and down. Examples are uh, the department stores, uh, terminals, airports, so they have the elevator. So the typical specification for the elevator, you have the width of elevator is 32 and 48 inches. So in meters, that is one to 1 1.5 meters. Okay. And then angle of inclination, that is uh, 30 degrees. The length or run, it varies. No? You have the variable, it varies. It depends on the design. And then the speed is 90 feet or 90 feet 
per meter. Ano? 90 feet per minute. Sorry. And you have also 120 feet per minute for the speed. Okay, so next we have the parts of escalator installation. So for the parts, we have the truss or the frame. So a welded steel frame which supports a moving stairway equipment. So it comes in three sections. The middle straight section may be of any desired length to provide a right to provide rises of different heights. And then the truck are steel angles attached to the truss on which the step rollers are guided through control and motion of the steps. And then also we have the sprocket assemblies, chains and drive machine. It provides the motive, motive power for the unit. An emergency brake located on the top sprocket will stop a loaded escalator safely on the event of, um, of a brake in break in the chain. Next, we have the controller. Consists of contact ports, relays, and a circuit breaker, usually located near the drive machine and emergency stop button, wired to control the place in or near the escalator. Will stop the drive machine and apply the brake. K-operated control switches at the top and bottom New wheels will start, stop, and reverse the direction of travel of the stairway. And then you have the handrail and balustrade assembly. So you have here the handrail. So for the handrail, that is a uh, rubber covered. So rubber covered. And then longitudinal cording, canvas layer. The inside is the balustrade. So next we have the safety features of escalators. Okay, so the safety features of escalator, we have the handrail, handrails and step travel at the same speed to ensure steadiness and balance at to aid and to aid naturally in stepping on and off the comp plates. The number two step on steps are large, steady and are designed to prevent from slipping. And then number three, automatic control of a service braking will bring the stairway to a smooth stop. If electric power or mechanical part should fail, passengers would then walk the step as they would any stationary stairway. So in case of overspeed or underspeed, an, an automatic governor shut down the escalators, prevents reversal of direction, and operates the service brake. And number five, an emergency stop switch is located near the comp plate, which may be manually operated to stop the escalator. The electric controls are also designed to shut down the stairway if by some accident, it is caused to reverse direction. Okay. Next, we have the fire protection system of escalators. So for the... For protection, we have first the rolling shutters. So this shuts off the wheelways at the given floors, thus preventing drops at the spread of fire upward through escalator wells. So the movement of the shutter is actuated by temperatures and smoke release. So this is the rolling shutters. Next, we have the spray nozzle curtain. Okay, so mostly you have the sprinkler. So our closely spaced high velocity water nozzle, which will in case of fire form a compact water curtain to prevent smoke and flames from rising through the wheelways. So automatic thermal or smoke release, release open all nozzles simultaneously. We have the sprinkler system or the spray nozzle curtain. Next, we have the smoke guard. So consists of a fireproof baffle surrounding the wheelways, extending downward about 20 feet, uh, 20 inches below ceiling level. Smoke and flames rising upward meet a curtain of water from sprinkler heads surrounding the baffles, which serves as a smoke and flame detectors. 
vertical sh shields between adjacent sprinklers ensure that the spray from one will not cool the nearby thermal fuses and prevent the opening of the adjacent sprinkler. So this is the smoke guard. Okay. Next, you have the sprinkler vent. Okay. You have the sprinkler vent, this one. So will waste floor openings have a duct on uh, each floor equipped with a number of smoke, smoke pickup release? So in case of fire, this release automatically start the fan in the fresh air intake located on the roof, driving air uh, downward through the wheelways. Dangerous gases and smokes are drawn in and are drawn in through the ducts and exhausted at the roof. The usual spray nozzle on the ceiling around the stairwell aid in quenching the fire. So this is the exhaust fan connected to the sprinkler vent. This one. So that's all for the fire protection system of escalator. So first, you have the rolling shutter. Next, you have the spray nozzle curtain, the smoke guard, and the sprinkler vent. Next, we have the moving sidewalks or electric walks. So while escalator are used to transport people vertically, electric walks are used to transport people horizontally at any inclination from zero to 15 degrees inclination, okay? So typical application for exhibits holes where management desire that person move smoothly through or pass a particular area without stopping or boarding. Also, we use this for airport terminals. So the typical specification the standard width is 27 and 36 inches. The speed is 120 feet per minute and 180 feet per minute. So you have also the type of installation. You have horizontal or level. You can also have the by level. And then overpass installation or underpass installation. Okay. So you have the you have this. Uh, electric walk. So I think this install in uh, Metro Mambaling, Super Metro Mambaling. Okay. So any of various forms of mass transit as moving sidewalks or automated driverless vehicles used for shuttling people around airports or in congested urban areas. So that's people mover. And then moving sidewalks, a power driven, continuously moving surface, similar to the conveyor belt used to carry pedestrians horizontally or along low inclines. Next, you have inclined lift, a, a platform mounted on a steel uh, guide rails and moving by an electric motor used for racing or lowering a person or moving along a stairway, also called the stair lift. So normally this is used by a person with disabilities or a person using a wheelchair. So this, uh, is, this is the use of inclined lift. Next, we have shoots. Okay. So it is a sloping channel or a slide for conveying things to a lower level. So this is an example of shoots, this one. So maybe you can uh, have a linen. So you put a linen from a uh, upper level to you to the ground. Okay. So mostly this is used in construction or materials handling. So or garbage from each floor goes to the chutes so that they have. Uh, do they can minimize the time travel from one floor to another? Okay, next we have the provision in the National Building Code concerning the transportation system. So this is based from the National Building Code. So this is the definition of terms used in the code. So for the definition, first we have the accidental contact. Any inadvert inadvertent uh, physical contact with power transmission equipment 
prime movers, machines, or machine parts which could result from slipping, falling, sliding, tripping, or any other unplanned action or movement. Next, we have the balustrade. So this is the frame on the on either side of the moving step of an escalator. And then you have buffer, a device designed to stop a descending car or elevator car or counterweights beyond its normal limit of travel by absorb, absorbing and dissipating the kinetic energy of the car or the counterweight. Next, we have the car. So for the car or cab, that is an enclosure for housing the operator and the hosting uh, mechanism, power plant and equipment controlling a crane, capacity of work, project, or plant. So this is the total horsepower of all engines, motors, turbines, or other prime movers installed, whether in operation or not. So next, we have car. So the load carrying unit of an elevator, including its platform, frame, enclosure, and door or a gate. Next, we have crane. Means a machine for lifting or lowering a load and moving it horizontally or hoisting mechanism being in an integral part of the machine. Next, we have the dam waiter. So a hoisting and lowering mechanism equipped with a car not exceeds uh, 3,861 square centimeter in area and a maximum height of 1.2 meters, the capacity of which does not exceed 277 kilos, used exclusively for carrying materials or maybe uh, food carrying or food transport. Okay. Next, we have the elevator. So a hoisting and lowering mechanism equipped with a car or platform which moves in guides in a vertical direction serving two or more floors of a building or structure. Moving of the car may be controlled by gravitational, manual, or mechanical power. Next, we have the elevator landing. So the portion of a floor, balcony, or platform for uh, loading or discharging passengers or freight to or from the elevator. Next, we have elevator wire ropes. This is a steel rope steel wire ropes attached to the car frame or passing around sheaves attached to the car frame which elevator or dumb waiters car and from counterweights are suspended. Next is enclosed. So it means that the moving parts of a machine are so guarded that physical contact by any parts of the human body is precluded or prevented. So this, this does not however prohibited the use of hinges, sliding or otherwise movable doors or sections to permit inspection, lub lubrication or proper maintenance. And then we have uh, escalator. So a power driven inclined continuous stairway for raising or lowering passengers or public or people. And then guarded. So it is shielded fence or otherwise protected by means of suitable enclosure guards, covers, or strand, standard railings so as to pre preclude the possibility of accidental contact or dangerous approach to person or object. Next, we have the hoist, an apparatus for raising or lowering a load by application of the building force, but does not include a car or platform. It may be base mounted, hook suspension, monorail overhead, simple drum type, or truly suspension. Next, you have the hoist way. It is a shaft way for the travel of one or more elevator or the dump waiters. Another, we have the machine. So this is the driven unit of an equipment. And then you have also a machine house. So it is an enclosure of for, enclosure for housing the hoisting mechanism and the power plant. And then also we have a uh, machine parts, so any or all moving parts of a machine, and then a moving walk, a type of horizontal passenger carrying device on which passenger stands or walk with its surface remaining parallel to the direction of motion and is uninterrupted. Next, we have the power transmission machinery. It is a shaft, well, drum, pulley system of fast and loose pulleys 
coupling clutch, uh, driving belt, V belt, chips, and belt uh, change and sprocket, gearing, torque, connectors, conveyors, hydraulic couplings, magnetic couplings, speed reducers, or increasers, or any device by which the motion of an engine is transmitted to or received by another machine. So that's the power transmission. Next, we have a process machine. So it is an equipment designed and operated for a specific purpose. And lastly, we have traveling cable. So a traveling, uh, this is a cable made up of electric conductor, which provides electrical connection between an elevator or dump waiter car and a fixed outlet in the hoist way. So next we have the guarding of moving, guarding of moving and dangerous parts. So all prime movers, machines, and machine parts, power transmission equipment shall be so guarded, shielded, fenced, or enclosed to protect any person against exposure to or accidental contact with the dangerous moving parts. So it should be enclosed. So next we have the cranes. So access to the case or machine house shall be by means of conveniently pla placed stationary ladder, stairs or platform requiring a step over that, that no gap exceeding 300 millimeter is allowed. And then you have number two, adequate means shall be provided for cranes having revolving cables or machine houses to permit the operator to enter or leave the crane cab and reach the ground safely irrespective of its position. And then number three, cages, cabs, or machine houses on cranes shall be enclosed to protect operator during inclement weather. Number four is a gong or other effective warning device shall be mounted on each cage or cab. And then number five, that is a temporary crane operation without warning device may be allowed provided there is a flagman whose sole duty is to warn those in the path of the crane or its load. And then number six, the maximum rated load of all cranes, cranes shall be plainly marked on each side of the crane. If the crane has more than one hoisting uh, unit, each hoist shall have marked on it and mark on it or its load block. It's rated capacity clearly legible from the ground or floor. Okay. Next, we have the hoist. So for the hoist, operating control shall be plainly marked on indi to indicate the direction of travel. Also, each cage control control hoist shall be equipped with an effective warning device. And then each hoist designed to lift its load vertically shall have its rated load legibly marked on the hoist or load blocks or at some easily visible space. Also a hoist have a stop which shall operate automatically shall be provided and each shall be provided at each switch. Uh, did end rails or torn, ta torn table to prevent the truly running off with when the switch is open. And then number five, you have each uh, electric hoist motor shall be provided with an electrically or mechanically operated brake. So arrange that the brake will be applied automatically when the power is cut off from the hoist. And then we have the elevator. So this is from the uh, National Building Code provision. So hoist ways for elevator shall be substantially enclosed throughout their heights with no opening allowed except for necessary doors, windows, or skylights. And then number two, ropes, wires, or pipes shall be installed in hoistways except when necessary for the operation of the elevators. So there should be no pipes in the hoistway of elevator. The number three, you have hoistway pitch a pits shall be of such depth that when the car rests on the fully compressed buffer, a clearance of not less than 600 millimeter remains between the underside of the car and the bottom of the pit. 
So you have a clear clearance of 600 millimeter from the car to the bottom of your, uh, I think bottom of the buffer, okay? Then number four, you have when four or more elevator serves all or the same portion of the building, they shall be located in not less than two hoistways and in no case shall be more than four elevators be located in one hoistway. So there should be at least only two elevator for two hoistway, okay? So no four elevators should be located in one hoistway. And then number five, so where a machine room or penthouse is provided at the top of a hoistway, it shall be constructed with sufficient room for repair and inspection. Access shall be by means of an iron ladder or stairs when the room is more than 600 millimeter above the adjacent floor or roof surface. The angle of inclination of such ladder of stairs shall not exceed the 60 degree from the horizontal. So this room shall not be used as living quarters or depository of other materials and shall be provided with adequate ventilation. That is for the machine room. And then number six, a minimum number of hoisting roofs shall be three for traction elevator and two for drum elevator, okay? And then number seven, the minimum diameter of hoisting and counterweights roof shall be 30 millimeter diameter. Number eight, elevator shall be provided with overload relay and reverse polarity relay. So this is for uh, electrical engineers. And then number nine, in high-rise apartment or residential condominiums of more than five story, at least one passenger elevator shall, shall be kept on 24-hour constant service. So if there are uh, apartments which is a uh, five story, five-story building apartment. So you should have at least one operational elevator uh, operation at 24 hours. Next, we have the escalators. So this is provision from the National Building Code. So the angle of inclination of an escalator shall not exceed 35 degrees from the horizontal. Also, the width, uh, the width between balustrades shall not be less than 558 millimeter nor more than 1.2 meters. So this width shall not exceed the width of the steps by more than 330 millimeters. So the width of the steps is 330. So number three, solid balusters or incombustible material shall be provided on each side of the moving steps. If made of glass, it shall be tempered type of glass. So normally uh, in escalators I see, so there are, uh, they are made of uh, glass balustrade no? or glass railings. The number four, each uh, balustrade shall be provided with a handrail moving in the same direction at the same time speed as the steps. And then the rated speed measure along the angle of inclination shall not be more than 38 meters per minute. And then number six, starting switches shall be K-operated and located within the site of escalator steps. So uh, normally we see an, a, a K-operated elevator uh, escalators. Okay. And then number seven, emergency buttons shall be conspicuously and accessibly located at or near the top or bottom landings, but protected from accidental contact. So normally in our escalators, they have emergency stop buttons. Okay. So that's all for the building conveying systems. Thank you for uh, listening and viewing this discussion. So let's uh, see you in our next discussion video. Thank you.